Okay, to finish number seven, it said um, two electrons. So you have to go back to the top. Remember where we said the charge of an electron was 1.602 times 10 to the 9 minus 19 coulombs. And there's two of them, so you could write it twice or you could just square. Also said a force of repulsion, so that's a positive. And you're looking for R. So don't forget to take the square root. And when you do, you should get 5.373 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. So it's really tiny. Okay, 5.373 to the negative 15 meters. All right, so those were your homework questions. Let's now move back to where we were in class. So we had done FQ is equal to KQQ over R squared. Get the force, electrostatic force on between two objects. We found how to find the electric field. And there's two equations. You can take the FQ and divide it by the charge being brought into the field. Or it can be K times the charge creating the field divided by R squared. We talked about field lines. And then we talked about electric potential energy. And that has to do with doing work to try to get a charge from one spot to another. So remember, we had a charge out here, and we had to do work to get it in here because this charge doesn't want to go here. So the work done to move the charge. And then I said, well, what if we wanted to say how much work was done regardless of the charge being brought in? So what if we took this energy, which is the work, like the work done, and we divide it by the Q, the charge being brought into the field. What this is going to give us is called the electric potential energy difference. But that's a really long name. And physicists don't like using that much marker ink ever. And so we will often just drop the energy and call it electric potential difference. But actually, as you get used to electric potential difference, we'll drop the electric, and we'll just call it potential difference. And as you get used to potential difference, we'll drop the difference, and we'll just call it potential. And then once you get used to that, we'll, real, we'll use a totally other different name for it. And that total other different name has to do with what it's measured in. If you look at the units up here, EQ is energy, so it's going to be joules. And charge is measured in coulombs, C-O-U-L-O-M-B-S. And a joule over a coulomb, we rename. And those of you that have already taken Physics 12, you know this. It's called a volt. Electric potential energy difference is otherwise known as voltage because of the other name, and its letter is a capital V. So probably of all these equations, the one you will actually use throughout the course the most is V is equal to EQ over Q, which we also write as V is equal to W over Q. The work done results in the change in energy. So of all the ones that we've learned so far, It'll be this guy that uh, will come up a lot, okay? Now, so that's electrostatics. The other little piece that you need to know a bit about is electricity itself. Um, and electricity is simply taking these charges. like So electrostatics has to do with charges that are stationary, static. But the difference between electricity and electrostatics is in electricity, the charge moves. It doesn't say stationary. And maybe if you play your cards right, we can play with the Van der Graaff generator next week, and you can make the charge move from being static to providing a route for it. Because if charge builds up in one spot, right? So here we have charge, and we want to move it. If we provide a path for charge that's building up, so maybe you're scuffing your feet across the carpet and you're creating charge on your body. Charge is building up on your body. And when you reach out and touch the doorknob, you're now giving that charge that's built up on your body a chance to flow from you to the doorknob. You're at a higher potential 
you have more voltage than the doorknob and by touching it you're supplying a route for the charge to flow and it always flows from higher potential to lower potential. So electricity is simply when you have a flow of charge and that flow of charge is called a current. And the letter for current is a capital I. Okay? And I is really, current is really how much charge flows in a certain period of time. How much charge flowing or flows in a given period of time. And you should be able to almost, period, there should be an oven there, uh, see an equation here. How much charge, Q, given period of time, T. Current is simply the charge divided by the time. If you look at the units, charge is in coulombs, time is in seconds. So cu current is really coulombs per second, which we rename amperes. Now we don't often say the word ampere, we usually just say amps. And its letter is just a capital A. Now if you remind me on Monday, I will talk about the seven fundamental units. I think we talked about them in grade 11 physics last year. An amp is actually one of the seven fundamental units, so technically a coulomb is an amp second. But because we learn about coulombs first, it looks like an amp is a coulomb second. Coulomb per second. Okay, so current then is simply charge that's flowing. What do you need to make charge flow? Three things. Three things that are needed to make charge flow. One is a material through which it will flow. And we usually call that a conductor. You don't tend to try to create a circuit with like plastic you would use probably copper or some kind of wire. Metals are the best conductors. Okay, so one thing you need to make charge flow is a good material. A second thing you need to make charge flow is a difference in potential. If you go back to what we were talking about up here, a potential difference, a difference in potential, you need something in your circuit that's going to create one spot in the circuit to another that has a difference in potential so that it will flow from higher potential to lower potential. Usually that's a battery or a cell or maybe a Van der Graaff generator. Okay, the symbol for a battery or a cell is a short line, long line, short line, long line. How many just depends on how bored I am. If it's a cell, it's one short and one long. If it's a battery, it's a combo. The short side is always the positive terminal. And the longs, excuse me, that's a lie. The short side is always the negative terminal. And the long side is always the positive. And the way I tell people to remember it is, think about the negative is only tiny, it matches the short. If you took the positive apart and made, laid it end to end, it would be as long as the long side. So the short side is the negative, the long side is the positive. And you need something that will create this difference in potential in order for current to flow. And then the third thing you need for current to flow is a closed circuit. Okay, so it's not going to flow if you have wires hanging out the end. And so we tend to draw a circuit might have a resistor, and I'm thinking you probably remember the resistor from grade 9. Here's my battery. This is my negative side. This is my positive side. And the current would flow around the circuit. Okay? Now we're going to run out of time again. I need to do one more to just talk to you about conventional current and um, electron current and just a couple of more other little things. Okay?